So I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes to talk about how do people and brands and businesses create more revenue and amplify communities. Um, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, we're going to kick it off with a quick explainer video, and then we'll get into more details. <clears throat> so that kind of gives you some context about what we're doing. Right? So if you look at some interesting digital stats, there are 7.6 billion people that live in the world, of which you, know, you have about 5.1 billion that's using mobile. Um, mobile messaging right now is actually more prolific than social networking. So what's happening right now is a big shift in people, how are people consuming content, but unfortunately they're all trapped by walled gardens, right? The next slide is actually kind of interesting. 62% of the people, more than half of the people in the world right now trust brands less. Um, what's also fascinating is that 32% 32, 32 of those people will actually rather just buy a brand they never heard of, right? So why, why are people doing that right now? Um, I think if you keep looking at the stats, ad blocking is becoming big, right? So Germany, India, Canada, and the US, London, etc. Everyone's installing ad blocking. People are trusting brands less. You're starting to see a theme here. Um, then of course, you look at kind of the new media companies of the world, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, even MailChimp. Everyone's kind of banning, you know, token offerings, ICOs, etc. So how do you kind of bubble up from all that noise? So one way of doing that um, is what kind of working with, with creators, right? So if you look at some stats, if you work with a creator or influencer, it provides a 16x return on your, on your dollar spent. Uh, so there's this concept of earned media value, which means that for every dollar you spend, how do you actually get back the most value? So it's 16x, so every dollar you're gonna get $16 back of potential revenue or potential upside. Um, so a framework, a, a way of thinking about this is called influencer marketing. Um, and the, the three pillars for that is first, understand what you want. The second one is activate. And the third one is then get conversion reporting. So, you know, so these are some examples of brands. So all the Fortune 500 companies in the world today, uh, they've all kind of figured out this already. Um, and what we're trying to do is democratize this so everyone can now have access to this information. So brands have realized that no one's looking at traditional advertising. Uh, people are using ad blocking. Uh, people are also very kind of hesitant to work with cryptocurrency companies. Um, so then what do you do? Um, so <clears throat> find a technology company that actually can solve that. So one of the interesting things to do is, I think step one, so just to give you guys a framework, something to kind of take home with, is when you want to get involved with the influencer marketing campaign, the first thing you want to do is find out the conversation or the tag, right? They're called hashtags. Um, so in this example, we put the hashtag of Bitcoin. And just by putting a public um, hashtag on there, you can find out the audience, you can find out where they're located, you actually can track trend line data. So if you overlay the amount of people talking about Bitcoin on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, you actually get an interesting signal on pricing. The next interesting thing is we actually added Beyond Blocks. So just by adding a Beyond Blocks Twitter hashtag, and even on Instagram, um, you get things like audience income. You can get things like where they're located. Uh, you can also understand gender breakdown. And, and this example takes like 70% male, 30% female. So you get a lot of insights just by the location, a hashtag, or even user accounts. Uh, so again, think about that as a framework when you want to get into influencer marketing. The next step to also then think about is, once you found that, how do you actually get the right influencer? So now you've done the research. Step two is, I want to find someone who has the right interests, the right audience that actually matches with my brand. So it could be someone that's in Los Angeles that uh, loves pets. It could be someone in New York that's a trader. It could be someone in Tokyo uh, that's a big fashion, a fashion um, connoisseur. So figure out the segments that get you really excited and then start finding those creators that can start talking about your product, your brand, your token offering, etc. The other big thing, of course, then is once you've activated an influencer, you've discovered who they are, you really need to then you think about reporting, right? So reporting will give you feedback around sentiment. How are people thinking about my product? What are people actually doing with it? Um, where are they located, etc. Um, and then from there, you know, the question really is, now that you think, you've thought about the creator, you figure out how to activate it, they've now converted, how do you now build that community? Um, so we've had folks that are running kind of these big um, influencer marketing campaigns. You start seeing the Telegrams community start exploding. You start seeing a lot of intent kind of come on board to their website. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things that people can be doing um, if you're using influencer marketing the right way. So, you know, we, we kind of quickly talked about this. The reason why we're here and the reason why we're so excited about the blockchain um, is this is a truly way to actually divide up all of the different walled gardens, right? So if you're a content creator today, the number one platform of how you're making money is through YouTube. And that too, you only make probably 10 to 15% of what YouTube makes. Um, places like Facebook, places like Instagram and Twitter, you're not really making any money, whereas the closed platform makes all the money. Um, so in this new model, 
when someone signs up with Creator.ai, you, you get a Bitcoin wallet or an Ethereum wallet. With that wallet address, um, you get filled with Creator tokens. Now when a brand or marketer wants to work with you, they have to stake Creator tokens into a smart contract. That smart contract contains all of the campaign metadata, things like flight dates, a description, what's my marketing tactic, how long is this campaign going to run. Once you've staked it with Creator tokens, you've launched a smart contract now. Anyone who has Creator wallet addresses, who matches the right group, will automatically get notified and can now create content for you. So people love working with us because if you have a, a business or, or um, a blockchain company you're thinking about working with and you really want to figure out, you know what, I want to have evergreen content or I want to have content that's always being produced every two days, every week, every 30 days, you now have an automated way of doing that that's allowing you to actually scale your content. So your Twitter following is increasing, Telegram is increasing, um, audience intent is increasing. So you start having a way to actually go on autopilot uh, for creating the content. And content is what really makes people excited about something. Um, it's not traditional advertising. Um, it's not looking at you know, what, how, to, you know, how to optimize my next news feed. Just find people that love what you're doing, connect the dots, and make it more efficient. So one example is uh, Wax and Opskin. Um, we worked with them from Creator.ai. Um, and you can start seeing the examples. It's pretty nice. So they came to us within 48 hours. They reached 3 million people. Um, and they also activated 45 creators. Um, these are just some examples of some of the content that came out of it, right? You get things on YouTube, you get things on Twitter. We actually helped creators talk about AMAs, which becomes very important. So as people think about the content strategy, right, we talked about ways to first analyze all the data, activate, find the creators, think about reporting, but all of that then needs to lead somewhere, right? And in this case, it was AMAs, and it was joining kind of com communities. So, you know, we have five minutes left. Um, but just some, some framework, again, how to think about all of these things. And you know, these are the, the top seven things I'm always thinking about. So, you know, email, everyone loves email because it's the easiest way to use it and it's free, right? Think about Twitter like email. So have conversations, find hashtags, find locations that are relevant to you. Um, and then start talking to people on Twitter. Just at this conference alone, people are talking about Beyond Blocks. And it's such an easy way of doing it, but not enough people are, are actually using that as a medium. The second thing is Instagram, right? Instagram has, I mean, everyone here knows that, but you have to have a lot more live video, and a lot more live stories. Um, the other interesting thing about Instagram is comments. When people are commenting on photos or videos, make sure you do use a lot of hashtags. Uh, that doesn't happen enough. Um, with Facebook, um, right now, you know, everyone thinks about it. Video eCPMs are, are very, very low. So if you're thinking about using Facebook right now, again, find a creator, have them talk about your product, your service, um, or your brand, um, and then hack it, you can push that and then start promoting it. Um, the, the, the fourth one is Snapchat. Um, what's really cool about Snapchat is, again, very underserved, um, a lot of great value. Uh, but when you think about how do I spend my money effectively, um, it's a great channel for creating great video content. Um, but again, the whole interesting thing is the chicken and egg problem. In order to use things like Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you actually have to have content. And that's where influencer marketing comes in. Number five, YouTube. Um, number, YouTube is probably the largest place or the largest marketplace for creators. Um, but again, activating them at scale is always a challenge. Um, and then I think number six is a new one, right? Uh, the, the new trend or the new buzzword for 2018 is probably voice skills. Um, if, you, if you have an Amazon Alexa, if you have kind of a Google Home, it's literally free service for you. So if, you, if you're thinking about doing a brand or a service, you should always think about what's, what's my new lexicon? Like how are people gonna ask my servers for something, get feedback right away? Um, people aren't using that enough and it's free. It's, it's literally free right now to create your own voice service, push it out to all these other kind of uh, closed platforms and you'll get free marketing and free PR. So, you know, think about it in another way, right? Find a technology partner to work with. The second thing is always think about video, video first, before text, before image. Um, think about becoming your own creator. Um, you know, they say in the blockchain space, if you're in the blockchain space for more than three months, you're already an expert. Um, so you, everyone here in this room is, is a creator, quite frankly. Um, and then always leverage video. All right, that's a, like a, a really nice and more streamlined way of thinking about it. So, you know, I think that the, the big thing I kind of want to leave everyone here, right, is we live in a paradigm now where traditional advertising is, doesn't work. Um, people are banning cryptocurrencies and ICOs and things like that. Um, but it, it, at, at the end of all of that, what's going to evolve is going to be something much more natural, much more authentic. But the question really becomes, and what you have to ask yourself is, how do I scale my authenticity? How do I scale influence? Um, and the way you do that is in this global economy we live in, you find the creators that are going to work with you and then amplify your brand. 
And there's three ways of finding the creators. The first is through a conversation or hashtag. Second is location. Third is through an account name, right? Just with those three things, any public information is available to you. You put AI and machine learning on that. Now you're going to get uh, you know, audience information, gender, income, interests. So you're going to get a lot more demographical data just to think about who's going to love my brand or who's going to love my residents. And then after that, connect with them um, and then activate. Um, and those, those are some of the big things we want to, I kind of want to leave with you guys um, at this great conference for Beyond Blocks. Um, really figure out the new way of activating all of this and amplify your messaging so that you can grow your community, create more revenue for your brand, and then really kind of connect together uh, this, this global world we live in. Thanks.